y'all hear me now? Appreciate that. Um, back in early December, they, they called me and uh, asked me would I be willing to speak at a buzz session. And I said, well, what's a buzz session? They said, it's a little breakout session. Put you in a small room and you can talk ball for about 50 minutes with just a group of guys. Somebody lied to me, okay? <laughs> And because uh, they said you don't bring any audio visual, nothing, you get up there and it's it's it starts shattering chalk and get on the board and and uh, more of a question answer type of thing. So uh, so anyways, this, this is going to be this isn't going to be just one person talking all night long. And uh, I know Art did a great job. Listen to him for just a few minutes. And and uh, but I think before we get going, I'm going to talk quarterback play and we're going to talk football. Uh, um, but I got to tell you a little bit about myself and, then we'll, and, and, and how I kind of got to this point because I know there's a lot of young coaches in this room, high school coaches, maybe young college coaches that are trying to move their way up. And, 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 and I'm a high school football coach. That's the first thing I want to say. Um, I'm a high school football coach that's been fortunate and blessed to coach college football. Uh, coached high school ball in the state of Texas for 18 years. Uh, had, had what I felt like was the best job in the, in, in the country at Lake Travis High School in Austin, Texas. Um, Making unbelievable money for a high school coach. My wife was teaching and coaching and teaching, and uh, so our income was 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 great. Living in the uh, in the hill country, couldn't get any better than that. And um, met uh, prior to all that, uh, I followed. I was the the guy, yeah, that guy that followed Art Briles and and that bunch at Stephenville after they did what they did, and Mike Copeland and those guys and. Got into college, or got into high school, uh, or got into Stephenville at that time, fought from Bay City, Texas, and, and uh, very first year there, um, Art and him had won four state championships, and uh, I was the guy that uh, was the first time in 15 years that we didn't get in the playoffs. That was me. So uh, I was, uh, I remember my wife taught third grade, and uh, she came home one day right after the season was over with, and there was a third grader. They came in and had Morris written across his shirt with a big circle with a line through it. And uh, this is a third grader. And, uh, and so it was a soccer mom that was mad because I didn't like soccer or whatever. I was athletic director too. So all that kind of came into play. And, and uh, I said, you know what, I got to do something. And, and prior to all that, we had played for four state championships and won one of them um, at two different stops in Texas, Elysian Fields and Bay City. But I thought what I was doing was right, and, um, and I knew that we had played 64 games in four years, but at that point when I made that change from Stephenville, or from Bay City to Stephenville, nobody cared what I had done prior to, just as we're all in this profession, and again, we're going to talk ball here in a second, but it's important, because where I'm going with this is, is if, you, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, this game's going to pass you by, this game's changing, and, um, and so kind of speed this thing up a little bit. I, 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 there, was, there was a friend of a friend that said, hey, look, there's a guy in northwest Arkansas coaching high school football that's doing something that nobody else in the country is doing. And uh, he said his name's Gus Malzahn. And I said, okay. Um, so I got a hold of, through friends, finally got a hold, called up there. Any of you guys, I know some of you guys out here work for Gus and have worked for him or know him really well. He's, 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 He's real close to the chest with everything he does. And so I called him and I said, Coach, I said, real quick, I know you get ready for the semifinal game in Little Rock. I, uh, I got a little problem. You don't know me. I know you're doing this hurry up stuff. I want to come and listen and, and watch you. I'd love to bring my staff out in, in January. He said, okay, Coach, you bet. Just call me back January 7th. Click. I said, okay. As we all have booster clubs in the state of Texas, and some of you guys throughout the country got your own booster club, that day I picked up the phone, I called my booster club president, and I said, I'm, gonna, I'm fixing book flights for all my offensive staff. We're going to Little Rock, Arkansas this Friday because I know another six and four year in Stephenville, Texas, I'm gone. No questions asked. I'm done. You get fired quicker in the state of Texas as a high school football coach, and I can't be an offensive coordinator in Clemson, and I promise you on that one. They'll run your butt out of town in a hurry. And... Uh, so they said, okay. So that Friday night, we flew our staff to, to Little Rock, Arkansas, got off, the, got off the plane, went straight to the stadium, watched, watched Gus and those guys play, and I said, man, they're doing something unique. I love it. The quarter, quarterback's doing, the way things are going, they're doing something unique. I waited on him right there after the game, shook his hand, and, he, and I introduced myself to him, and he was surprised because he thought I was just a high school coach from Arkansas trying to steal his stuff. 
And I said, no, coach, I promise. I mean, I'm six and four. I'm down on my luck right now. I don't care how many games have won before me or what have won prior to. I said, I, I can't. I got to have some help. He said, okay, you bet, coach. Appreciate you coming. Call me January, and we'll let you, you know, we may come out January 7th. Call me back. I said, all right. So I go back home. I said, tell our staff again. I said, look, he still doesn't believe us. I turned right back around. I booked four more flights to Little Rock, Arkansas, to watch him play in the state championship game the very following week. And I'm standing there as he gets off the field or out of the locker room, and he sees me, and he knows now that, hey, this dude's pretty serious about what he's talking about. We developed a relationship and, uh, at that point. And, and I'm telling you, again, a lot of you young guys out there send emails, and, and you got to be persistent. And, and I was persistent. It's just a, Gus and I are just high school coaches. Built a relationship, and, and we come back and, and uh, get into to, we, we install this stuff in Stephenville and, and uh and away we go with it. And uh, I make a move from there. We, 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 uh, uh, we go on, and, and Matthew Stafford beats us in the state semifinal game, 41-38, and, and uh, in front of 35,000 people in Denton, High, Denton uh, uh, North Texas. And uh, we, uh, I take the job at uh, Lake Travis in Austin. And I had an insurance man in Stephenville, Texas, and that's the way it all started. He uh, sent a petition out. We got beat in the third round of the playoffs, and he sent a petition out. Never met the man in my life. He sent a petition around, around town, around the community, and was wanting to fire me because I didn't call plays like Art Browse called plays. And uh, that's the honest truth. And uh, I said, you know what? This is crazy. This is, this is absolutely absurd. I take the job in Lake Travis. I follow Jeff Dykus, which Jeff had just won a state championship there. So I'm like, well, I've already followed Art. He already won four. This dude's only won one. I can't get any worse. We get in there, and, and uh, fortunate enough, we, we go 32-0, we go and 0, and we win back-to-back -back state championships. Um, and uh, the relationship I had built with, with Gus, he went to Tulsa, from Tulsa on down to Auburn. Developed a relationship with Ty Graham. Coach Graham uh, was at Tulsa at the time. And he came down and, and uh, offered me the job to be his offensive coordinator three times. And all three times I said, you know what, I, I just, it ain't worth it. I mean, I'm happy in Austin, this is where we want to be. And uh, he finally just tells me, he says, Coach, I promise you, you can make a bigger difference at the collegiate level with young men than you can at the high school level. Give it a chance. You've done all you can do in high school, you can always go back, come try it. And I said, you know what, I will. And for this day, I'm, I'm deeply indebted to Coach Graham. He's done a great job at Arizona State and got me in it. And we, we had a great year, won the Hawaii Bowl, um, finished fifth in the country in total offense. Coach Sweeney then calls um, and uh, offers me the job out at Clemson and didn't know me. Had never been to South Carolina but one time, and that was on a job interview, and I took the job. And, uh, and it's been what a great man to work for and, and a blessing it is. But, and I'm telling you this is because you got to be willing to change. You have to be willing to look ahead and see what's – What's out there? Uh, there's always a better mousetrap. Uh, we, as our staff, we met offensively the last couple of days, and, and that's the one thing we're talking about is what, what, what have we done good and what have we done bad, and let's get rid of some of this bad stuff and let's get rid of some of the good stuff that we maybe just spent too much time on, maybe you know, the time and distance thing. Let's get rid of it, and let's go try to find something new out there across the country, whether we're going to visit high school staffs or whether we're bringing a high school staff in or we go visit some of you guys, uh, some other colleges across the country, there's got to be something else out there that we can do better. And uh, we've been, like I said, we've been very fortunate. Um, obviously, Taj Boyd and Sammy Watkins, those type of guys make you a lot better coaches than what you really are. But back-to-back -back years for us finishing top ten in the country in total offense. But, uh, but still, there's things we can do better. CEOs aren't running Fortune 500 companies like they were five years ago or ten years ago. Coaches aren't coaching the ball like they were five and ten years ago. This game is changing. The run pass tags offensively, I know there's a lot of defensive guys in here, a lot of guys that we play against, that's changing the game. You know, they don't call, they're not calling linemen downfield. It ain't happening. So if they ain't going to call them down the field and we can still throw the football, we're going to let our linemen run down the field, we're going to try to throw the football, all right, until somebody calls it on us. And uh, those are just things that we have to, we, we look at, but a lot, of, a lot of things, but it starts with a great quarterback. Um, I've been very fortunate in my career to have a lot of really, really talented quarterbacks. Um, and, um, and, and the one thing I always talk about with our quarterbacks is, are they a winner? That's the number one thing we want to talk to our guys about. 
And I'm talking about not just a winner on the field, but when we recruit quarterbacks, we want to go and look at their parents. We want to talk to their parents. Um, and, and what kind of high school program, what kind of high school coach has brought him up? Um, what, what, what's being said about him in the classroom? Um, you know, we just got a great one in from, uh, from Gainesville, Georgia. Coach Miller and that group down there in Gainesville have done an unbelievable job with Deshaun Watson, just enrolled in school the other day. And uh, what an unbelievable kid, top dual threat guy in the country. And, and, but not only that, he's a better person. But uh, you know, what kind of footwork does he have? His ability to throw the football, all that type of stuff matters. And, um, but you know, really, we can talk quarterback play and how we warm up and, and feet apart and pivot at the hips and all that stuff if we want to. And I'll, and I'll go through all our drill work, and I can draw it on the board right here. But you know, if there's something that you guys want out of this, by all means, let's talk. And somebody ask, and we'll start this thing running and, and go with it. But, uh, you know, our, our, our base, base offense in Clemson, we're a two-back run-oriented play-action shot football team. That's what we are. We want to take a minimum of three shots down the field a quarter. That's 12 a game. We'd like to run two reverses a half. That's four reverses a game. Okay, now does it always work out that way? No. We firmly believe in running our quarterback. We think that he's that extra, as, as we would always talk, he's that extra gap you kind of got hid in your pocket. You know, you, 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 got, you need something, we're going to run our quarterback. Um, and by all means, we don't have the answers. We don't have all the answers, but we feel like what we do, our kids believe in it, and uh, we like to, miss, uh, to, to, to mix up our misdirection with our speed motion game and still try to put a lot of window dressing on it and be able to run down the hill. And... Um, Again, is there anything anybody want to talk about before? I mean, I can keep going on our quarterback play, but uh, I can put a couple plays on the board, whatever you guys want. Is there anything anybody wants to see? Talk about your screen game. Our screen game. All right, I can talk about our screen game. Absolutely. We, uh, you know, our, one of our top screens is just a just simple, simple wide receiver screen. And uh, we ran it about 10 times the other night in the bowl game. Um, we do ours. We number our guys just a little bit different right here. Our top, this is just our top screen. We're going to take, we're going to push our, we're going to push our nickel, push the five man to the nickel, Sam. We're going to pop him. That's one way. We call that our shark screen. That's our shark. We got a lot of this stuff built off all our run game. So that's some of the answers off of our run game. If, if, if you're cheating the nickel, Sam, inside the box, Inside leverage off the apex, we call him our apex player. We tell our quarterbacks, the first thing you do as a quarterback, it's just like a pilot. We go out and get on a school plane. What does a pilot got to do? The pilot's got to go through a pre-flight log. He's got to go through a checklist. Our quarterbacks have got to go through a checklist as soon as he gets there. And uh, the first thing we look at, obviously, is the free safety. Where is the free safety playing? All right, we tell our free safety, or we tell our quarterback, look, if that free is playing off the hash, chances are he's going to stay off the hash. Find the nickel Sam and a strong safety. <clears throat> They'll tell you the rest. Next thing we tell him to do is find the apex player. If the apex player is cheating inside leverage, all bets are off, everything's done, let's get the ball out on the edge. Okay, everything we do, every, you, you've got to have an answer in what you've got built in. So take your run game. And do you have an answer? What's your answer for field pressure? What's your answer for boundary pressure? What's your answer for house blitz? What's your answer for corner cap? We set an offensive staff room. We put all our formations on the board each week. We call it our ready list. And out beside, once we get all our ready list done, got all our stuff up, we're going to do our each formation. The last thing we do on Wednesday, Coach Elliott's our running back coach, and he studies all, our, all the blitzes, and, and we come in and we say, okay, this formation, what's the answer in field, breath, field pressure? And we'll write it up there. What's the answer in house pressure, or house blitz? Boom. Corner cap, boom. Boundary pressure, boom. And what we try to do is we try to make each one of each formation the same, if you can. Now, there's a couple that you can't. Because what we do a lot of times, like you guys do, if we, if we, understand, if we know that something's coming and we're able to check out and get to it really quick, then we know it's a lot easier for me as a play caller to get it checked to, to, to the answer. And uh, again, we got a, got a, uh, a quarterback test that, uh, that I give out each Thursday and we go through it together 
on what's his answer off each formation. And usually he checks, he, he'll look at me and he'll check me if he senses something. Try to make our quarterbacks don't think, just play. Let me do the thinking. You do the playing, let me do the thinking. And um, I, I firmly believe if you give your quarterback, if you overload him and you, and you tell him, look, we're going to check to this and to that, and if they do this, they do that, heck, you're spending all your time looking around and he, he's, he's trying to figure out to get in the perfect play. And the bottom line is you can't get in a perfect play. You can't call the perfect play. Okay? I mean, you have to, if you have to call the perfect play, it's going to be a long night anyways. So give your guys answers. What's the answer if you've got the zone read? Or better yet, let's just say you're not in a zone read. Let's just say that you're, uh, you're in just regular straight zone. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to a zone read, and we'll come back to just straight inside zone right here. So here we go. Let's do it just like this. All right, just something simple. We tell our quarterbacks that's a three-man surface side right there. If we're going to run the zone, the zone, <clears throat> we're going to run it going to our left. That's a three-man surface side. Anytime we get a three-man surface side, we tell our quarterbacks it's an auto give. We get an auto give out of that unless his pre-flight log takes him out of it. And that would be that guy. Okay. Now you better have answers. What are you going to do for it? A lot of teams, what you're seeing, what we see is a lot of trap too. People are going to try to trap, take, take the bubble away, take the shark away, whatever. So what's the answer off of that? And you better have, you, you can't just live with just one answer. You can't just live with just a, I hope you guys over here can see it. You can't just live with, with, with just a regular, you know, spot screen. You got to have a bubble. You gotta, then you got to have a pass tag off of it because everybody's going to try to run. Everybody's going to try to chase on you and, and, and what, what are some of the other answers that you can have off of a, a zone pull? Um, but again, th those are just some things that we have um, without just uh, you know, making your quarterback think too much on it. Um, that's one of our, our screens, Coach, that we have. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do the traditional jailbreak like everybody else does to the boundary. Um, we got a really good one. Um, it's a double screen that we run. One thing we did in, in bowl practice, which, uh, which I thought was really good, we, we didn't do it during the season, but we, uh, and we, but we are next year, is, is we're going to go ahead and cut. We're going to go ahead and cut our scout team guys. Um, we did that in bowl practice. We had some stuff we were really working on. and So we just alerted our scout team guys. We said, look, man, we're, we're going we're gonna to cut, do a lot of cutting this, uh, today or every other day we cut. And we just told them, be, be ready. And, uh, and that's been good. And same way for next year, we're going to do the same thing in the spring. But uh, let's just take uh, just a traditional, just a simple. Let's do it like this right here. <clears throat> no matter whatever front you want to have up there, but uh, we'll go over. All right. One of the, one of the, we call it, it's our double screen coach. We can, we can call it either way, but we can take that back. Let's just take him to the field. And what we're telling that back now is your tail is to chase to the, to the tick marks, chase to the hash, and you're exploding out to the hash as fast as you can go. Now get your eyes on us after, after four or five steps out here. You need to get your eyes around quick. You also need to keep your eye on that end. <clears throat> we're going to take our five man, and we're going to crack the first man off the line inside. We're going to pop and show with our right tackle, and his, we tell him, you're trapping the hash. You trap the hash. We're taking our, our right guard. We're popping. We're telling him to run the alley. Once the four back, if, if our tailback gets to the hash, he is to set it down. We're reading the end. If the end comes up the field, we're dumping it right now over the top. Right now to the four back over the top. This is what we call our fast side. It's a double screen fast side. That's our fast side with it. If he gets to the hash and he has the ball in his hands, he's to put his foot in the ground and don't cross the hash. You're going to have a kick and a, and a seal straight up the hash with it. Now we come back over here. Let's just say the end peels on us. Got our slow side. 
we want this left tackle to get the, to get the defensive end's hands down. So it's set, cut. We want these hands on the ground. And what we're after here, we're pushing, we're blocking the spot with our, with our three back. So if the safety was coming down hard, he's going to block the spot with him. So if let's say he's inserting in, he's there. Now they're just going to switch that thing off. The guard's out. The center's running the alley. And we're trying to get the ball in the tunnel right here. Now what we tell him is this. What we tell this guy, if, if they're pressed up, because that's the biggest thing you're going to see. You're going to have a corner that's going to be pressed, a boundary corner going to press on you. How are you going to peel him off? He's got to do a really good job of setting out three steps. We're going to push on his outside shoulder three steps, put our foot in the ground, and stay on the move and funnel it back inside. If he's off, like I've got it drawn up here in a perfect world, he's off, then he's pushing out to coming back, put his foot in the ground, and get straight up the field. Okay, so press run it, tunnel it a little bit more inside, off, stick your foot in the ground, and get back vertical again. Okay? And uh, I, know, I know we got a couple of our guys in here. Coach Elliott, ra raise your hand. Coach, Coach Elliott, coach our running backs. We got any of our guys in here? All right. Thank you, Coach Elliott, for coming. Appreciate that. <laughs> Honor. Appreciate it. You must be bored. So, uh, but no, and, and uh, like I said, Coach Elliott will be around afterwards too if you guys want to ask questions. But, but that's our double screen, and it's, it's been good for us, Coach. i tell you where I like it at. We like a double screen inside a 10-yard line going in. If I can catch him in man-to-man, -man, usually what you're going to do is you're going to get, if you've got a quarterback, and I'll talk about his steps here in just a second, you're going to be able to get the ball out over the top. We tell our quarterback this, you're going to take quick three with your eyes. You're going to keep your eyes down the middle, but you've got to feel your read end. All right, so in this case here, I've got to feel the right end. My eyes are down the middle holding him with a quick three. Once I set quick three, and if this guy has, is, if he's attacking me, it's easy. Put my foot in the ground, I'm just getting it right over the top of him. If he's not, so let's say he peels now, peels to eat. So I'm quick three, now you want to start your drift back into your slow side. And what you're going to have is this guy here is going to be so fast, and he has to say, wait a minute, man, you're on the slow side for a reason. Okay, so slow down, set it up. And, um, and, and usually what happens there, Coach, and, and you can call your fast side to the boundary. That's a great call. You can set in a three-by-one. Another really good, good look down here. Do it just like this. Take your same rules. Let's say it this way. Let's call the fast side into the boundary. Here we go. Pop. First man off the line inside. Here we go. There's who you're reading right there. Now your tunnel comes, still comes back to number two. He's still pushing. If he's pressed, funnel it more back inside. You got to go to work now. If he's off, let's say the nickel Sam's off. Good, I don't have to go quite as far and be able to get back, back vertical. He's still got to cut that in. So once you get the rules established, it doesn't matter what the fast side is or the slow side. Okay? We've had, we've had just as much luck fast side being to the, to the field as we have to the boundary, but that's really good. You got some man coverage down inside the 10, 15 yard line. That's a good little crack screen right there. So, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I, we've got it built into a just a regular running back screen, Coach. Let's just say that because uh, that's a that's a great question. We've got it as a blitz answer into a running back screen. So let's just say that I had a say I had a running just a true just simple running back screen back to the field right here. I have a three by one. We tell him he's hot off any field pressure. So let's say we get we get poker or we get. Just a, even a mic plug, mic fire, absolutely, Coach. We always check there for hot first. So that's why we want to keep his eyes down the field and with a with with sense to feel that end. All right, now we also have something we'll do is, is we'll run them. We'll run them, keep them flat, and we'll hit him. I mean, we've done that. And so... There you go. And you're doing it off of your screen game? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we go, off of our running back screens and even that one, any, any type of field pressure, he knows he's got to be hot. And we're just going to just get the ball out right now to him. Everything, all bets are off out of it. But, yeah. Y'all doing your run pass stuff off of what? Off counter and zone? We, we do it off man schemes. We do it off man schemes, guard full ISO, guard yep. power. We do it off some of our zone schemes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I think that's the direction this whole thing's going now. I really do. And, and that coupled with tempo is really, uh, is, is really having a tendency to, to be, put, put people in a bind. I mean, I, you know, I know we've got some defense coordinators out here. I mean, it, that's tough to be a defense coordinator now at any level. It really is. And um, but somebody else had, yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, what, is there anything really, Tony, off, off of a... Uh, yeah, a lot of a... Uh, let me draw that up, Coach. If we're getting a, a bunch of it, Coach, we'll, t we'll tag some of it out off of our, off of our uh, run pass scheme. So let's just say that... Uh, let's just do this right here then. Let's go... Uh, I'll, in, I'll invert them here for you guys. Usually like to put Sammy Watkins in the slot right there when we try to do that. So uh, let's do uh, – if I'm going to run a run pass scheme off of, off of my inside zone, hope you guys can see that right there. If we're catching a lot of it, then one of the big things we'll come to, Coach, obviously we're going to read him. That's my number one read. And uh, if this dude bails – it don't mean anything. We got five in a box. We're handing a football. If this dude comes in a box, then we're taking ball to backer, and we're going to run the bubble slant right off behind it, Coach. That'd be probably the first things we'll come to. I don't know if you can see that or not, Coach. Um, we'll do we'll do a little bit of that. Um, obviously, if you're getting a, if you're getting a lot of it, you know we'll take and I mean we we'll, we'll take and let me go through our. One of the other big ones that we like to do, we'll come in, Coach. We're going to bring him in motion. And we're going to do this just like that right there. And then try to hit that guy right there. So, I mean, the number one thing we're going to come to is, is obviously our, our run pass tag off of it. So, but again, I, I know we didn't, I mean, a lot of you guys probably want to talk quarterback play and, and uh, we can definitely do that, but hopefully you guys get something out of this. But is there anything else on – any other questions? Somebody else had a – What do you like inside the 10? Inside the 10, well, usually what we're going to do inside the 10-yard line, Coach, we're going to take uh, – uh, of course, a lot depends on down and distance. I mean, we'll, 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 uh, we'll landmark, Coach, all the way from, from the 45 all the way down. Um, inside the 10-yard line, we're going to try to keep in our quarterback's hands as much as possible. I firmly believe that, we'll, uh, whether we get into some two and three tight end sets. Uh, I love speed motion down inside the 10-yard line. Um, a, lot, a lot of times what you find is teams that see that you're just going to give speed motion just as a, a kind of a decoy, and no, uh, he's not, nobody's going to flip it. They're going to let him fly by, and, and they're using some, you know, whether it's a power run game off of it or whether it's an inside zone off of it. You know, one of the things I could say is, 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 is to be able to flip it down there, especially inside the five-yard line. Uh, we had it the other night. I wish we would have flipped it the other night, and we tried to run a quarterback power off of it, and we got, we got blown up inside the five. And then so now we got the ball third down, ball on the one, trying to go in, and we bring in our heavy package, and the uh, right tackle jumps off sides. I mean, we're, we're trailing fourth quarter, and... Man, I'm ticked off. Golly, I already had my two-point play. And uh, thank goodness he jumped off sides because it backed us up, and we were able to throw our two-point play for the touchdown. So I, I told him I was, I was cussing pretty hard, but, man, I was so proud he jumped off sides. But, no, he, uh, it, was, it was good, though. But, uh, yeah, you just try to keep in the quarterback's hands, Coach. You know, firmly believe we got a lot of, a lot of quarterback run game that we do. Um, our quarterback's got to be able to run the football for us. And, uh, and I think Taj has done a great job of that over three years for us. So, anybody else as far as 
scheme wise. Yes, sir. Uh huh. You're basically asking what kind of information am I getting from the top, from the box? Yes, sir. Do you, you wear headsets, right, Ghost? Yes, okay, I, I know a lot of you guys can probably relate to, to, uh, to what I'm about to say on the headsets. They can be a total cluster. I mean, it can be unbelievable. You can take your head off, headsets off and just got a pounding headache. Now, maybe we're the only group that has that happen. Maybe, I don't know if you guys are laughing a little bit. But it could be total pandemonium. Um, but no, I, our guys do a really good job. Um, coach Pierman's in the box. And the, the only thing I need to know, Coach, is down in distance and hash. I take my game plan, Coach, and I write it about six times. I handwrite it. And, and Coach takes the teams to the movies on Friday nights, and he lets me stay behind. And, and um, that's literally all we do. We come in on Monday, and I'll kind of go through this. We'll come in on, on Sunday nights. And um, Sunday afternoons, we usually go, go through our film study of, of, of uh, what we did the night before. I don't watch the whole game with our offensive staff. I've, got, I've gone through it. We've, we've say we've ran 87 plays. I've gone through and maybe circled 35 of them. 35 that I just needed some clarification. What were they thinking here? Hey, Coach Elliott, what was he doing here? What was his thought here? And, and, and we're just being able to, and we'll watch it. I go, okay, click it. To, I say, anybody got anything before play 45 that they got to ask me? That's Sunday. Then, uh, then we'll go into a staff meeting. We'll have our grades. We'll give them to coach, discuss all that Sunday night. We'll then break down and watch the first half of the last three games of our opponent, just the first half of it. Usually try to get out of there Sunday night. Monday morning we show up, and Monday morning is a day that everybody has their own study. Like Coach Elliott, and, and uh, he'll take him, and Coach Caldwell, and they're going and they're working short yardage, and, they're, and he'll start in on his blitz stuff later that afternoon. I don't, have to have, I don't need to know any of that. While I'm doing that, i got another coach that looks at all shots. And if, you, if, you've had, if someone scored on a play more than 12 yards on a run, or 15 yards, or 16 yards on a pass, he's got it down, we're going through it, and he's going to have a report to me that afternoon. I'm basically looking at formations. That's the first thing I look at. We'll get on that. I put all my ready list, start it on the board. We get back together that Monday afternoon, make sure practice is ready. Tuesday rolls around, and anything we got to get cleared up, it's the same type of thing. We start our third down study. I firmly believe if you want to win at any level, you better be good on third down. And you better be good on third and short. All right, third and one to two will win you a lot of ball games. Okay, a lot of times you spend, spend so much time on third and 11 plus or third and seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 plus. Well, if you're in those long yardage, you got a whole lot more problems than that. All right, so you better get you two or three that you can execute. But if you're spending all night long and third and long, hey, it's, you, got, you, you better go back and look at something else. You better go back and look what you're doing on first down. And um, so that's, that's the biggest thing. We'll start our third down study. I let our staff go. Usually Monday nights about 8.30, 9 o'clock. And uh, me, and our GA, the, me and our GAs used to stay up there at about 2 in the morning. And we finish our third down and red zone plan. I know what I want to do. And, and I, I got a great staff and they'll come in with some ideas. But sometimes it's better for, hey, look, let me just throw some country and western music on. And let's get everybody out of the building. And then I'm going to get what I want. And I'll, they come back in on that next day. We'll go through it as a staff and we'll talk about it. Um, that's, that's Tuesdays. Wednesdays we get together, we go through what we talked about. Sometimes it's been a late night, long night, and I just, yeah, hey coach, what are you thinking here? And, uh, and, and that's okay, then we'll, we'll scratch and add. That's usually Wednesdays. And then, so everybody's got their plan, coach, and I know I'm beating around the bush with it, but the, the biggest thing is, is by the time Wednesday in the evening to Thursday's there, the game plan's done and I'm starting to handwrite it. And coach, I got it, and, and and, and I know exactly what I want to do, and I got it, memorization. So the board I carry on the sideline is just to cross-check things. The next biggest study we have is P and 10. The first play of a series, 
What we found is this. If you can get a first down on the first, if you go out there and don't get a three and out, the last two years we scored 66% of the time. So P and 10 is huge. You're going to get 15, maybe 18 a game. So make sure those P and 10 plays are pretty beneficial. Hey, you want to take Sammy Watkins? You want to line him up at tailback? Do it. It's a whole lot easier to communicate coming off the sidelines than it is when he's out there and you have to get four other guys in and he may be back thumbing his nuts back over here and you're hollering for him and you can't get him up there and you know what you want. You know you got a great play if you can get it all together. So what we do is make sure that P and 10 study is right. And we'll, we'll, we'll go through a series of P and 10s from making sure we got all our tight ends out there, man. We'll jog our tight ends about five or six yards on the field. We'll let them all jog back. Because you know how those defensive dudes are up there going, it's 12, it's 23, it's 12. And they're screaming. And he got a defensive coordinator that's hollering up at the box, what is it, what is it, what is it? What's the personnel package? So, you know, and, and, and so P and 10 has been huge for us. We take in about four to five different specials a game. That's it. Four to five is all we need. And... Um, and we try to burn them. I mean, we're, we're, we're very, we, we're aggressive. And, and I just, and I've told Coach Sweeney from the day he hired me, I said, you're going to have to tell me, whoa, not go. We get a safety the other night in Orange Bowl. Ball's on the one-yard line. We're trying to go 99 on that one play. And I got them on the sidelines, got them all gathered up. The first thing I said to them, I'm grinning ear to ear. Coach Sweeney's looking at me like, you're fixing to do this, aren't you? And I said, Coach, this is what we do. Coach Elliott's right there, and he says, hey, do what we do. And we call the shot. Well, we got safety. They got, somebody got points out of it. It just wasn't us. But that, that's part of it, you know. So I'm over there going, yeah, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. Now Coach Elliott's like, you're okay. We're all right. We're going to be all right. But that's what you do. And, uh, you know, be aggressive. Um, a lot of you guys in here that are play callers, man, you know, be aggressive with it. And... Um, you know, don't, don't, don't be afraid to step out of the box. Maybe you got a head coach that's, that's, that's you know, really conservative and doesn't want to. You know, our guy's not that way. Our guy's, look, coach, it's yours. I hired you to do this. Go do it. Now, be smart, but let's go do it. So the, the information I get in the box is down, distance, and hash. I do ask the guy in the box to help me memorize a lot of our landmarks. So if I'm on 40-yard line right hash, Everybody, everybody on our sidelines is going to know what we're going to run. 35-yard line, 25-yard line right hash. Middle of the field, 20-yard line. We know exactly what we're going to run, and we walk it. And that's part of my quarterback meeting on Thursday. We meet for 30 minutes in the building to go through blitz stuff, and we go straight to the field, and we literally start. We're like a little cult. We get out there, and we walk here. We walk over here. We walk over here. And, uh, and we work our way all the way down. And our guys know. I can call the formation, they'll call the play, just like that. And um, so down distance and hash is the biggest thing. And the next thing you know, everybody's wanting to give an opinion. Everybody wants to give their advice. Look, that's between series. That's between series. And, um, and then we, we'll get over there and we'll write down a few things. But the first thing I like to do, our quarterbacks sit with our offensive line on the sidelines. They don't sit with the running backs. They don't sit with the wide receivers. They sit right with the offensive line. And the first thing I do, I come straight off the field and I go straight to our offensive line. And I say, well, what can we do? Well, what do we need to do? Okay, well, what happened? Okay, and, and, and that's, that's kind of that's the first thing we talk about. And then we'll start talking to the wide receivers and the running backs. But, um, but again, that, that's a great question, Coach, but it's, it can be chaos at times. But you try to just everybody's got to shut up and let's get this back right again, you know. But... Uh, Anyways, I'm sure we're the only ones that ever had that problem with headsets. I wanted to know why, why, why on the sideline as a play caller, not the <clears throat> Yeah, I, I've been asked that coach so many times. Why, his question is, is being, being a coordinator and a play caller, why I'm on the sidelines and not the press box? Because, Coach, I guess 20, 20 years ago when I started calling plays, I started on the sidelines. And, uh, and so I... That's just what I've started doing, and I know what to look for. I know what I want, and I know what I want from the box. But the biggest thing is this. I don't want to have to relay through some GA what to tell the quarterback. I want him to look me dead in the eye and to be able to sense that, hey, look, this is pretty serious, dude. I don't know what you just saw, but this ain't it. 
and not through some telephone or on a headset. And so I, I think that if he can sense, you know, my, I don't know the word, I mean, I, you know, just passion at that moment, um, you know, be able to come off and at least answer to me and not through some GA that's going to relay a message or through my, one of my position coaches relaying a message. No, I want to talk to you and I want to see you right now. And I want to see the offensive line right now. And if, it's, if I have to get in their tail, it's, I'm right there. I ain't doing it over no headset. And, uh, and coach, it's just, it's just, then you just get a feel for it. So just through experience, I've seen guys in the box, and I, I think that's great. Sometimes I just, you know, if I'm in a box behind some glass and I can't hear the crowd and I can't hear, I, I just, I don't know if I'd, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty wiry guy anyways. And I don't smoke, but I can imagine if I did smoke, I'd smoke a carton of cigarettes up there. But, I mean, it's just, I, I, I've got to constantly move, be moving at all times. And, um, but I, I just, I've just, I don't know. Um, it's just a feel. It's a preference. A lot of you guys are in the box, and that's nothing wrong with that either. So, but, anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah, pre-snap recognition of, our de of the defense, obviously, is a free safety. Where is he? What's he doing? What's his body language? Okay, so we're going to look at that free safety. If that free safety is sitting on the hash, is he, is he upright? Okay, if he's upright, he's, chances are he ain't spinning down. Okay, if he's got a slight bend in his knees, bend in his waist, the guy's either coming down or he's spinning to the, to the field. All right, so we'll say, okay, well, if you just don't know, let's just check the leverage over here to the nickel Sam and the strong safety. Let's find out where they are. If the nickel Sam's inside and the strong safety's outside and that safety's sitting on the hash, chances are he's probably going to stay there. Okay, so it's, it's all about the demeanor, coach, of that safety. If that safety is, is, is really heavy on, his, on, his, on the balls of his feet or he's cheating up and we, we peek that corner, maybe the corner's backing off and they're fixing to go three buzz week on us, then, hey, we know. We know exactly what the case is. And, and any time we can get that, then we obviously we know that right now, if you get that right there and you get him spinning, he's one-on-one. -on -one. And that's all you can do. At Lake Travis Middle School, all I could ask our middle school guys to do is just get a one-on-one -on -one with a ball in the air. We've done our job as a coach. When they got to Lake Travis High School or Stephenville High School, it's the same thing. If I can get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a ball in the air, we've done our job as a coach. It's no different at Tulsa, where I was, and, and now at Clemson. If we can get the ball in the air in a one-on-one, -on -one, you got to go win it. If you can't go win it, we got to go recruit better. That's it. And, and if you can't get the ball in the air, then we got to go find another quarterback that can get it. But, again, it goes back to answer. What is your answer for them spinning to the field? What are you going to do? It don't matter what we're going to do. We know right now that that dude right there is about six foot five. We're going to put one of our taller guys right here. Doesn't necessarily have to run very well. But we know we're going to create one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he's got an answer off of the way this guy's playing according to what he does. Now, obviously, if he stays on that hash and they stay in a two-shell look, well, look, they got two dudes, I got one. I need to be throwing over here or running the football. Okay? And so it's all on the demeanor of that free safety coach. That's a good question. We have try to teach that all the time with those guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Coach, we were, we were a lot better last year at running, running our, our, what we call our action game off of it um, than we were this year. And I, and I don't know why. It's just the way it all unfolded. We ran it a whole bunch last year. Ran it a little bit this year, but uh, not nearly as effective. Question is off of our our power read, our quarterback power read. We ran it several times the other night. Again, it's just about how you're going to disguise it and what you're going to do with it. We can do it out of a three by one. We draw it up out of a three by one, and we'll draw it up out of a two by two. I tell you, another group of guys that that uh, that really do a great job of this is Coach Bryles and those guys down at Baylor. They do an unbelievable job with that. And, and uh, Coach Montgomery and those guys, really, uh, really unbelievable with it. But anyways, if I'm going to go into a three-by-one with it, Coach, <clears throat> obviously we're here. 
thing we've got to do, Coach, is we want to be able to, we're going to run the place. We call it our action game. So if, if whatever we had this called, it would be action, whatever the play was. And we're going to lock. We're going to, we're going to run the full play. And what we want to try to do, Coach, is off the mic, off the Sam, and take him. And we're going to ride him. We tell our quarterback we get a click and a half. So it's one click, a half, and then we're going to trigger out of it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to run the mic down the hill. If we can get the mic flowing, then we're right off the top. We tell him to keep him friendly from the backside safety. You got to keep him friendly. Don't lead him into that backside safety. <clears throat> if we feel like that they're spinning one, going to a one high look on us, then we'll come right straight up the hash to our five man. We always say this also, like I was just telling you guys earlier, if you get that look, you can't go wrong with that guy. Doesn't matter. Can't go wrong with that guy. Now coming into the boundary with it, really like to play this into the boundary. Ran this against LSU in the bowl game a year ago, and uh, we learned a lesson because they brought field pressure and hit us right square in the face. Uh, luckily, we didn't fumble the football, but you better have a blitz answer off of it. So you better have a hot answer. So if you're going to run your power read this way, again, we're trying to get the wheel to flow. We're going to tag and straight up off the wheel. We're going to tell him he's got the bang eight or the skinny behind it. We'll click and a half and trigger, but you better alert him for any field pressure because if you get any field pressure, that ball's got to come out right now because what will happen is your quarterback will be going click and a half, looking here and triggering, and he's going to get hit in the back of the head. So tell him you got to alert field pressure. What is your answer for field pressure? It goes back again to that same Ready list, what's your answer for field pressure? Well, you better be able to get the ball out right here. So he'll alert him, the five man, hey look, me and you right here, okay, if they come, so if I feel the pressure, then we gotta get the ball out to him, and then hey, we'll come back, we'll pick up three yards, we'll come back to, the, come back to this a little bit later. I'm sorry, we're gonna block the play, coach. We're blocking the play, absolutely. So if we've got, uh, we're gonna run a, just a normal power read right here. Now, obviously, we're going to try not to get him down the field, but if he does, he does. But it's the same thing for us. No. Oh, uh, who has that? No, coach, no. He, only to give it. We're going to call the give. The give or the pull. If he pulls it, he's running it. Okay? If he pulls it, he runs it. But no, we don't have the, the, the give for the run and the pass off of it. I don't have that. That's that's a little bit. That's a lot on him. I, I mean, I. That's a great idea. I probably need to look at it. Yes, sir. What's some individual drills that you do? Yeah, individual drills with our quarterbacks. Okay, let me get this. One of the uh, we do. We always start off with a hash drop, coach. Let me, let me back up. The more competition that you can build into your drill work, the better off you are. So we're going to try to. Compete in everything we do. From warming up, we're competing. And we're going to, tell our, we're going to take our guys and we're going to partner. We'll give a, a GA or a coach or, you know, whoever. And we'll start off with, say, our four quarterbacks right here. And we'll go about, we'll go 10 yards apart. And we'll tell them to cock and load it. We're going to offset quarterbacks right-handed. We're going to offset just a little bit, take my right foot on my left instep. We're going to cock and load, have that shoulder cocked and ready. I'm right-handed here, and I'll, I'll say, set, go. And it's how quick can we get the ball out. All right? And I'll have a guy standing right here. Say, I got uh, one of my managers. I got about three girl managers, and they come down there, and I'll have one of them. Her name's Kelly, and I'll put Kelly right here, and I'll say, all right, you're going to keep up with, with what, you know, we're going to hear who popped the ball first. That's what we tell them. And so we'll, we'll tally, and let's say this was Taj, and that was Chad, and that was, say that was Cole. And that was Nick. Then we're going to say, I'm going to say, all right, cog and load it. Go. Boom. All right, Taj gets a win on that one. All right, and we're going to do it two or three times and go, okay, here we go. Now let's change it up. Let's go, uh, we'll go walk away, easy way. So we're going to take it. I'm going to say, cock and load it. I'm here. And I'll say, go. Well, easy way if you're right handed quarterback is to turn to your left, and get the ball out. And we'll do that two or three times. I'll go, okay, we'll walk away hard way. So here we go, cock and load it. Here we go. And if they're here, I'll say no. Because the first thing quarterback's got to do, if he's going to throw a ball, he's going to turn his shoulders. So we really want to torque the hips 
really get it torqued and hold it. You can't torque it anymore. And I'm going to say, all right, let's go hard way with it. Cock and load it. Boom. Step, plant, and drive. And then we'll take, and we do that, Coach, that we spend about, I don't know, after they get just a soft toss getting loose. You know, obviously we don't come out running and gunning like that, but we spend about five minutes on competition. We try to mix it up every day. We'll start with that. Then you can do a walk toward you. So I say, all right, here we go. Walking to me. Easy way. Cock and load it. Now. Boom. All right. Walk away. Let's go now. Let's go a uh, hard way. So I'm here. And then, boom, we're going to spin it. And we're going to spin all the way around. And same thing. We'll take bag drills. Do the same thing on our bags. And I lay the bags, just the long bags, just like that. I'll put my quarterbacks here, just like that. And they're all looking this direction. Got the bags lined up right here. I say, all right, here we go. Set, go. We're going two steps over, two steps back. And it's as fast as we can go. And I'll say, set, go. We've got to get the ball out. Stick your back foot in the ground. Throw off balance. And then I have another drill. We come on balance. But just as much competition as you can build in in your warm-ups, the better off you are. We do a little bit of stuff underneath center, too. Working our five-step drop. A lot of ladder work, I firmly believe. We spend 15 minutes a day on nothing but footwork. 15 minutes a day. From ladders to bags. We got another drill we call our figure eight. You guys have probably seen it. We'll take a cone, a cone, look just like this. We try to space them out, I don't know, within a three or four yard area. And then we'll take two more cones. Okay, all right, just like that. And I'll put my quarterback right in the middle. And he's looking this way, and he, but I'm here. This is me. I'm standing here. And I'm saying, all right, buzz him. And I'll send him. I'll go back. Well, he'll have to figure his way out. He comes back, chop his feet, go. Everything we do, we always tell our quarterbacks now, as you're moving in the pocket, you're here, you always want to move with that back foot first. We always tell our back foot, even if we're coming here, I'm going back foot, back foot, back foot. And so as they work in and out of these cones, it's all back foot. And they'll work their way back, and they'll go here. And they'll work their way back in there. And then I'll have, boom, get the ball out. Got bean bags we throw at them. They're having to hop over bean bags. But uh, so that's some of it, Coach. I've got, a, I've got a DVD. I'll give you my card. I mean, we don't have nothing to hide. I mean, it's everybody in the country does this stuff. And, uh, but again, it's, it's been a... Uh, it's been a blessing. It's been an honor to come and talk to you guys in front of my own peers that, that, uh, that you know, play a lot of, uh, against a lot of you guys, coach against a lot of you guys, your Texas high school guys that are in the room. and You guys will make a difference um, and uh, keep doing what you do. We're obviously in a, a, a great profession, but a profession that makes a, a difference in young men no matter what level you're at. I can tell you, if you, you, you know, live your dream, chase your dream. Like I said, I'm just a high school football coach. And... Uh, you guys are more than welcome to come out to Clemson and uh, talk ball with us. Like I said, we don't have all the answers, but we're going to have fun doing what we do, and we believe in what we do. And, uh, again, I thank you all and, and, and uh, appreciate everything. Thank you.